we, we added 50% for picks. We went from two to three, so Did it's a good result. You know, last night we saw one pick, one trade. And yeah. Picks. Today, Subban gets Opie Marlowe. That trade happened. Yeah. Miller, we saw a lot more. I mean, why do you think it was that? Nothing really happened during the first round yeah. yet. After... We saw can't a little be. bit of an explosion for a I don't know. There. I can't be because of the cap, because we still don't know the cap right. exactly. So <laughs> I thought maybe that had something to do with it, but no, I don't know. It's maybe you just uh, you talk, you talk, you don't come to a conclusion, you don't come to the result, and it might take some some more time to uh, get the details ironed out. And when you get to it, then then you make a deal. I don't know. I mean, everybody's going to look at their opportunity differently. You're going to have your cap space and lack of it or lots of it like we do, and then you make your plans accordingly. So every team would have to answer that in a different way and in their own way. So I can't answer on anybody else's behalf, but, you know, we're going to look at it with our opportunities and, and move forward. All right, like I said, there's no change with that, but we've said all along that we assume the risk, and, and if they're gone by July 1, we're going to have a lot, lots of cap space and a lot of different other opportunities to, uh, to move forward, and life goes on, and that was part of the risk we were willing to take. Are you operating under the assumption that now they are going to be gone? And maybe have to no, no, but you know, we'll find out soon enough. How does the conversation change with your own guys once that window is talk to all the other teams happens? Well, I'm sure that we'll get some answers shortly if, if it starts looking like they're moving into another direction. And then, uh, but we've we've thought this was a, a, a this could happen. So you know, if it happens, we're not going to be shocked if we thought at the deadline that this could be the case. And if it is the case, then we'll just move forward with what we have and and uh, start building uh, other ways to, uh, to uh, fill those holes. What you would have is a lot of cash space now. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that's a huge asset. That's how the Devils made their move today. Yeah. That puts you in the market for a bigger trade because of... Potentially, yeah. 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 We've, we've done some big trades before. We're willing to do it. If it makes a lot of sense for us, we're going to do it again. And But it's all going to be for the... Uh, you know, the, what we believe is, is something that benefits us in the, in the short term and long term. How active will you be in that free agent window that opens late tonight tomorrow? Can you be as active as you want, not know exactly where some guys may be? Uh, like I said, I think we'll we'll start finding out soon enough where, what the uh, what the direction of it is, and at some point you're going to have to move on if you have other opportunities and you have uncertainty on some other areas then you have to move on because you don't want to lose every opportunity just because you might not get the answer on the, on another one so you, know, you can't name names but you feel like there are viable center options available uh if that change is not stick around yeah, there, there, again there'll be a lot of different options again if it's not free agency there could be a trade and we'll look at all of those if you have the amount of cap space you could have for these guys leaving, you need to use it right away. You need to use it to keep the momentum going. No, we don't need to use it. We'll use it if we think it's going to be something that we feel strongly about and will put us in a good position and to compete again. But otherwise, we're going to. We have lots of good young players coming, so we're going to make sure that they get a proper opportunity as well. You know, the Texiers and Bemstroms, those guys are going to get an opportunity to play for us, and Texier already did. And, Bamstrom scored 23 goals in the Swedish league and was the leading scorer in that league. He's ready to take on a challenge. He's big enough, he's strong enough. We've had him in Columbus now for a couple of weeks. He's a man, he's not a boy. He's played in the men's league and, and great results. And he's as good of a power play player as you can get. And, you know, we were, we were looking for a guy in the power play this year that could shoot the puck like he can. So he's going he's gonna to get an opportunity to show what he can do on the NHL level. And whether he's ready or not, we'll see. But you know, those are the guys that we're going to be looking into rather than just signing somebody now that we would feel like, oh, boy, we're going to have to sign somebody now. We're not, not going to be the case. We'll sign somebody if we believe strongly that 
he'll help us and, and be a good fit for us. No pressure then with the division the way it's going. No. no. We, we, we think those guys are going to be impact players in the NHL. Whether it's going to be right now, we don't know. But in the near future, we, we believe in that. You know, you've seen how, how young the league is now, how, how guys can come into the league as 20-year-olds and, and, and make an impact on the team. We think our, our uh, prospects are that level of prospects. So. And RD is as good as anybody's in the league. And you know, if, if Bobrovsky leaves, we'll see what our goaltending is all about. But we have some talented kids that will get, get a great opportunity. You, uh, you made a bold decision. And, 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 and a, lot of people, a lot of people, some people might have been afraid to do that. How much, how much do you not second guess? No, how things went? Not second guessing at all. We, had, we said we had Bobrovsky, we had Panarin maybe for the last time. Let's give this group a chance. Let's give it the best chance we can. We we could possibly give them to uh, to make a run, and that was the decision we made, and we we move forward with it. And no, there's no second guess. We do it again. Remember, just Nashville clearing out Subban and his contract. Does that change the Duchesne market? Here? I'm going to have to ask David Poyle. <laughs> you said if Bobrovsky leaves, is there is it is still a possibility he comes back to Columbus? You'd have to ask Bobrovsky. <laughs> <laughs> from, from your side? We've told him we, we, he's a great goalie. We'd love to have him back. We'd love to have Panarin back. You know, it's it's not always what we want. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is this, I'm sorry. No, is the sign and trade a, a viable option once the window opens? I guess it could be. I mean, if, if the eight years is really important, then yeah. yeah. Um, you guys did managed to add a draft pick today. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you came in. Fifty percent increase. There you go. That, that, that's one way to look at it. But you and you guys from February, late February till now, have had a chance to kind of think. Well, we only have two picks. Did that make it easier having that much time knowing what you did to sit there and, and see all those names go off the board? And <laughs> it's, it still sucks, but what are you gonna do? We, we made that decision and. Like I said, these guys are in it to win the Stanley Cup too. I, you know, they, they, I'm sure they would have liked to have more picks, but they're not here to just draft guys. They're here to win the Stanley Cup, so they knew what, they, what we were doing, why we were doing it, and, and uh, sometimes that's what you got to do to give yourself the best chance. From your end of it, has anything changed with Bobrovsky in that whole situation? No. Or is it, it's Again, no.